This is GarageBand on Mac. This is a track in GarageBand, and this is a track header. Exciting stuff, right? What, what do you mean, no? All right, all right, it's not the flashiest feature in the world, but knowing your way around the basic functions of GarageBand's track headers will make sure your projects sound their best, and taking advantage of the track headers' lesser known advanced features could drastically improve your workflow. Hey, it's Patrick from the GarageBand Guide. By default, GarageBand's track headers give you plenty of options to get going with. So, going left to right then. On the left of the track header is the track icon. This will default to whatever track type you've created. So, if you create a drummer track, a wee drum picture will show there. If you create a guitar track, a guitar amp or guitar icon will show there instead, etc. You can change it, we'll cover that in a second. Next to that is the mute button. Pressing that will mute this particular track, meaning that when you play your project back, this track will not be heard. It's worth noting that you can mute multiple tracks at the same time, and loads at the same time if you click and drag up or down. Next to that is the solo button. Pressing this will solo your track, meaning that when you play back, you'll only hear this track. And again, you can solo multiple tracks if you want. To the right of those buttons is the volume slider. It starts at zero decibels by default, and you can click and drag on the volume slider to lower or increase the volume of your track. Another way you can change the volume on this slider is by double clicking on the slider itself. That allows you to manually type in the volume value that you want to set it to. So I can press minus two here and bring the volume down to minus two decibels. You can instantly return the volume to zero decibels by holding the option key and then clicking on the slider. The pan knob controls whether a track is heard from the left, right, or center of the stereo field. You can click and drag to adjust the pan amount, and again you can option click the panning knob to return it to its default position. If you right or control click on your track header, this handy shortcuts menu will pop up. From here you can open a new audio track, open a new software instrument track, open a new drummer track, or create a duplicate of the current track you have selected. Duplicating a track also duplicates all of the plugins, EQ and automation data as well, so it is really handy. You can rename your track from this menu and also delete it, though GarageBand will double check you want to delete if there are regions present on the track. You can assign a new colour to your track's regions here, as well as change the track header's icon if you wish. Finally, you have the option to configure the track header itself. Selecting this option opens this menu, where you can add further buttons to the track header. Locking a track essentially bounces it in place, preventing any accidental changes. While a track is locked, you can't record on it or edit it, but it does drastically reduce how much CPU power is used. This is especially useful in projects where you have multiple software instrument tracks present. Click on the track lock icon in the track you want to lock, then press play. 
Wait a moment and the track will be locked and the icon will change colour. The record enable button enables recording on that track. The main reason you'd want to use this is to enable multiple tracks to record at the same time. So for example, if I want to record the same melody to two software instrument tracks at the same time, I'd click the record enable button on both tracks. Then when I hit record and start playing, they will both record what I'm playing at the same time. Only available on audio tracks, the input monitor button allows you to hear the sound from the musical instrument or microphone connected to the track's input. Two, 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 one, two. Monitoring lets you hear yourself play so you can hear the part you want to record as well as the rest of the project. You also have the option here to select a groove track. With this activated, you can hover over the left edge of a track's header and select that track to be your groove track. Once you've done that, check boxes appear on all other track headers that when checked will have that track follow the timing of your selected groove track. drummer or rhythm tracks would be obvious picks as your groove track and this is a great way for tightening up audio regions and a project that maybe just doesn't sound tight enough, timing wise. Another boring sounding but actually really useful GarageBand feature is automation. Click right here next for three automation tips you need to know.